Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lakeshore Foundation. Thank you for coming to listen to our exciting speaker, Kara Yarkon. Good morning, Lakeshore community. I have brown short hair. I am wearing a very beautiful magenta velvet dress, cognac boots. My most fantastic accessory is my power chair that has really pretty pink sides and a lot of bling on the back. Nice introduction for any of my friends who might have a visual <laughs> impairment. I have had and continue to have an extraordinary life. I was born in India but raised in Canada and I am a child of divorced parents. Uh, my mother was very sick. She attempted suicide multiple times throughout my childhood. I knew what it was to have responsibilities at home. I knew what it was to also do well in school and I knew what it was to take care of my mom. And that instilled in me this sort of sense of purpose. I was a caregiver. And many of you might have dreamed about what you wanted to be when you grew up. I dreamed of being a humanitarian. And I had the privilege of joining the United Nations fresh out of college at the age of 23 in Ecuador. My dream had come true. And it was everything that I had hoped for. There were some changes in my life. And at the age of 30, I was diagnosed with a very rare type of muscular dystrophy, H-I-B-M hereditary inclusion body myopathy. This is a very rare recessive disease that affects all 650 of my skeletal muscles with the exception of the quadriceps. Basically what's happening is, is that the muscles are wasting away at an accelerated rate. You can imagine when a doctor is telling me that you need to quit your international career and move home to be with your parents who will eventually become your caregivers you will probably never have children because it would be too dangerous and you just need to prepare. Someone else who didn't know me very well was looking at me and deciding what I could and could not do, what my limits were. Can you imagine that I went along with what they said? You. <laughs> I went from Angola where I spent two years. I went on to China after the Sichuan earthquake emergency and then to Madagascar. Mozambique, where I had the pleasure of then practicing the Portuguese that I'd learned in Angola. One week after my 42nd birthday, I was having a driving test because I'm going to get a new car that's wheelchair accessible. And in that assessment, where, you know, four hours of poking and prodding and tests and this and that, the OT, the occupational therapist, just turns to me and goes, well, technically you're quadriplegic. And my first thought was, how are we going to afford everything that I'm going to need so much sooner than I thought. How much harder am I going to have to fight to break down barriers so that I am taken seriously as a professional, that I am included, that my voice is heard, and that I am equally compensated. It was overwhelming. Again, it isn't that there's anything wrong with becoming quadriplegic. It's just that this world is not built for us. And I want to do so much. And I am dedicated and devoted to having the greatest impact in my lifetime. And I will do my best to help make change in the world. 